Welcome to our review of Reality Shift Deluxe, a magnetic racing game from Academy Games, who we have to thank for letting us take a review copy home from Origins 2023. Now, Reality Shift on its own is a two to four player, three dimensional racing game from Matt Hansen. Now the Deluxe Edition, which is what we're reviewing here, includes additional rules for having a fifth player and some additional modules. Both versions of the game though, do feature artwork from Aldo Dominguez. Reality Shift comes from Apollo Games and is being distributed and sold here in North America by Academy Games. The playtime is listed as 15 to 60 minutes, but we'll, we'd go to so far as to say 15 minutes to two hours or more, depending on <laughs> luck and how silly you get with the board setup. Now, I would also say the age on the box is off as it's listed as 14 plus and there's no reason younger players shouldn't enjoy this game. Uh, in particular, my 13 year old daughter loves it. It's one of her favorite games. And due to the lack of text on the base game cards, I could see even younger kids enjoying this unique racing game. That said, there are small magnetic pieces in the game, which probably impact the game, the age rating more than anything. A reality Shift takes racing to the third dimension using magnetic racers who race along tracks on the faces of chunky cubes. It uses a mix of dice and cards in order to figure out how far you can move each turn, but then also uses the same cards to allow players to hack the board by sliding, twisting, and flipping cubes, leading to a constantly changing track. Now, Reality Shift Deluxe contains everything in Reality Shift and more, including all of the stretch goals from Academy's well-funded Kickstarter for this game. Now, these include things like power-ups, a more competitive way to play, additional tracks, a board, and a bunch of other stuff. Now, it is possible to pick up either version of the game, and you can pick up both if you want to make some truly epic tracks. Now, for a look at these racers, the cards, and the very cool map cubes, check out our Reality Shift unboxing video on YouTube. There you will see just how chunky these cubes are and the brilliant way they fit together. Yeah, the component quality here is great. Uh, the magnetic racers grip the map cubes great. The cubes actually lock into each other, making them easy to stack. Card quality is good. The rule book is fantastic at slowly introducing the game one little bit at a time. The only wonky thing I had is one of my cubes rattles and I have no clue why. Still works though, so it's just noisier than the rest. The base rules for Reality Shift are quite simple, and you should be up and playing in minutes. Take the nine base game cubes, mix them up, and make a grid of three by three, so that the start cube is in the opposite corner to the finish. Then rotate the cubes so that the corners and middle are white side up, and the four edge pieces are each a different color side up. Place the checkpoint cards off to the side, then shuffle the action deck and give three cards to each player, who should grab a summary card and a racer in the color of their choice. Select a first player and you're ready to go. Note with the deluxe edition, you will be leaving a bunch of stuff in the box at this point. All the rest of the stuff is optional and we'll get to it in a bit. A player's turn starts by rolling the die. Then if their racer isn't on the board, they place them either on a starting space on a visible side of the starting cube or on a visible checkpoint whose number they collected on an earlier turn. Next, the player takes three actions in any order. One of these is to move their racer forward a number of squares equal to the value on the die. This is mandatory. You have to move the mo number on the die. When moving, you have to maintain your facing and you have to move the full amount rolled. If your racer can't complete this movement, they crash and are removed and will respawn next turn. The next optional action is to move with an action card. For this, you get two choices. One is to flip your racer around 180 degrees. It doesn't matter the value of the card played to do this. The other is to move forward the number on the card. Now, the last option is to shift reality. Pick a cube on the board whose face up side matches the color of the card you want to play. Whites here are wild cards. Rotate, slide, or flip the cube as shown on the card. These include rotating the cubes 90 or 180 degrees, turning them in place, or flipping them, which can actually include rolling them up onto other cubes or down off them. After doing this movement, if your cube is over air, it falls straight down to rest on the table. Any racers caught between or under cubes during this action are removed from play and will respawn on the player's turn. The active player replaces any played cards with new cards from the deck and the play moves to the next player. The first player to land on or pass over the finish wins. Yeah, the only thing we haven't really mentioned here are checkpoints. There's seven of these on each of the cubes besides the start and finish. There's one on one side. If you pass over a checkpoint, you have a choice to collect the matching card if it isn't already collected. Whenever you are forced to respawn, you can do it from a checkpoint if you own it. Note, you can only hold one checkpoint. You can't collect a bunch of them. Another easy to forget rule is that if a racer is on a piece of track that is the same color as they are, 
that cube cannot be manipulated in any way. Due to this, you need to avoid using the white racer while just playing the base game if you have the deluxe version. And that's it for the core game of Reality Shift. That, that covers everything you get if you just pick up the standard version of the game. Next, we'll dive into some of the optional rules in the Deluxe Edition. Now, the first is the White Racer we just mentioned. This allows you to play five players, but introduces a special rule. Because most of the cube's sides are white, more than half of them, you have to pick a disadvantage at the start of the game, like not being able to use checkpoints or moving half the number rolled on the die. Next are three Deluxe Track Cubes. These include the White Hole, which can always be manipulated, but doesn't have any tracks on it. The Portal Cube, which has a portal in the center of each face. If you enter the portal, you come out of a, any other portal on a different side of the cube, and the Vortex Cube, which zips you along right through it in one side and out the other for only one movement. Then we have Power Up Cards. You claim one of these by passing over a checkpoint. Each player can hold two. These include powerful game-breaking abilities like Disintegrate, which lets you move through an opponent's racer and destroy it. Now, to go with these, there's also a battle mode variant, which turns the game into a PvP battle instead of a race where players are trying to get enough defeats, like enough kills. There's also a capture the flag variant called power mode, where you're trying to collect numbered cubes from checkpoint squares, and they can be stolen by the other team. One of the best new additions, and one we tend to use every game, is the new mounted board. It comes with two sides. The first one just helps you organize your cubes better and keep things square while playing. The other, though, actually features paths on it and allows your racers to go off the cubes and then back on. Finally, you're presented with a number of deluxe path configurations to try with using combined cubes from both sets, uh, as well as if you have a second set of the, the base game, you can combine them in. And what's nice about this is they recommend different rule variants that work best with each. Like you don't want to do a race on the one that's one giant cube tower. That's much better for PvP. So really what you have is a pretty simple race game with a very cool 3D element and the ability to modify the board to your advantage and your opponent's disadvantage during play, along with a bunch of optional ways to modify that basic gameplay. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And I got to say, it's pretty cool. Uh, we first saw this game set up on a demo table at Origins and I was instantly intrigued. Intrigued enough that I was like, Sean, Sean, come over. You got to check this out. The first time you see this game, it just, you know what it is. You look at it, you see these cubes and you see this little racer on the side and you see a die and you see pass. You're like, oh my God, it's a racing game. But it's like a 3D and with cubes. Like I was sold right away. I told myself right after seeing it that I'm like, I am bringing home a copy of this game no matter what. And I got to thank Academy Games for letting that be a review copy. Now it's easy to think that just from seeing the game that it could be pretty gimmicky. But I'm happy yeah. to say there was a real game here, not just a neat looking one. Yeah, once I got home, um, I did learn there's a bit of a weird learning curve here. And that's if you just kind of take it as a beer and pretzel game and kind of goof around and start moving blocks because it's fun. Um, many times you end up with a way shorter game than you'd expect. It, that half the time you're going to move a block because it looks like it'd be fun and it, it ends up it just opens a path for an opponent. Um, this included at least two games we played where like not every player got a turn because someone won on their first turn because of what other players did before them. Now, one recommendation for this game is either use a small table you can walk around or a Lazy Susan you can mm -hmm. spin because you'll really want to be able to see this game from all angles. Oh, that's a good tip. A Lazy Susan definitely does help with this game, um, as does if you can make the game lower because like sometimes you need to look in kind of like in the gap at, at, at like the hole in the donut to see a racer in there. Um, the one thing we learned though after those first couple plays where it just went a little too quick and seemed a little too random was that the actual skill required what you need to do to play reality shift well um that's this is with or without deluxe is you have to focus more on making sure you're not setting up your opponents to win that you're not giving them a path and when you just kind of randomly move stuff far too often you're actually helping out the other players once everyone at the table learns this, that's when the game starts to become more deep and thinky with more uh, AP and more decisions and more, oh, I'm almost there, but now I'm not even close. It's at this point with a bunch of people who have played the game a number of times and have figured this out that the game started to stretch way past that one hour mark that was shown on the box. It's interesting that this game sort of ignores this occurrence on the box and suggests a shorter, long playtime on the, uh, the box times. Yeah, it has to be who they play tested with. I don't I don't even know uh, where they came up with the one hour. So like one hour for a race game seems like it could be too long. But then you know what? When you have a group of experienced players, you almost get that chest-like feel. When Reality Shift, at least the base game, 
we found that, that it was, you were out thinking your opponents and you were always trying to deny your opponents the win, which just did kind of drag out the game a bit, but in a good way. Like it, it, when you do get that win, it's very rewarding. Now that changed when we started throwing in more stuff from Deluxe. Once you, the more optional stuff you toss in, the more chaotic the game came became and more casual it became. And I don't mean this is a bad thing. This this could be good or bad, depending on what you're looking for. If you want your racing game to be a nice two-hour thinking, I'm going to outthink my opponents, you're not going to like all this stuff. But if you want to go back to that beer and pretzel, quick, rapid-fire race, these guys are racing around this 3D board, that's where you're going to want to throw more of these random things in, like the power-up cards. And what I like about it is that this one box does both, right? Like, it has sliders I can manipulate based on who I'm playing with and what I'm looking for. And the ability to adjust that game to a range of players combined with the great table presence is certainly just the sort of game we look for when thinking about public play events. Yeah, this is a great one to uh, catch people's attention at the table, stick to the base rules, don't let people overthink it, do some rapid fire 10, 15, 20 minute games. Now, of all the people I played Reality Shift with, it's my teen daughters that actually enjoy it the most. Uh, this is one of their favorite games in our collection. They played the game on their own, um, and Gwen's even taught it at public play events without me playing. Um, they've got more plays of this game than I do. They particularly love coming up with ridiculous cube stacks and maps and tracks, though. That's the thing they're into. And I got to say, some of them get a little too complicated and take them hours to finish. Um, I personally prefer to stick with the ones in the book because they're play tested and they work well for, like, remember I mentioned they mentioned the different modes that work well with each map? Well, they do. Um, they'll create some kind of crazy thing and be at it for hours. But to each their own. I, I applaud them for making their own fun out of the game. Now, I can very much imagine back in the day as teens, we would have tested the limits of the game with cube designs. Yeah, definitely. I'm sure we would have. So overall, Reality Shift is a very neat racing game, uh, different from every other racing game I played. Well, it can seem a bit chaotic at first, once all the players start paying a little more attention to the game and where things are going and how they're going to change, it gets very tactical and can even be quite strategic. That said, it can be a fun, almost beer and pretzels experience if no one takes the time to overthink it. And then the added rule variants and additional materials in Reality Shift Deluxe let you adjust that slider even more. Sort of a modern day speed racer where the track itself is a danger to you and other races ever okay. shifting in a doctor's strange like vision until you can <laughs> find the right moment to race for the finish line and hope it's still there when you arrive. Now, if you grew up playing like traditional roll and move style racing games, I don't necessarily mean games with racing cards. I mean, games where you're just rolling to see who gets to the end first. And you want to see that genre completely reborn into something more modern and tactical. You got to check out reality shit. Now, if you're on the other end and like abstract games all about outmaneuvering and outthinking your opponents, Reality Shift may also be for you. One of the best parts here is the amount of variation you can get with just this one box. The folks who should perhaps stay away from this are those who do not like randomness in their game and who don't like games where the board state changes before their next turn. Oh, yeah. This is a game where the physical board could look completely different between one turn and the next. Now, groups that don't like overly competitive games with lots of take that should also avoid reality shift. This game can get quite nasty, and often the best way to move forward is to move your opponents backwards or just crush them between cubes. Well, that's it for our review of Reality Shift Deluxe, which is also just a review of Reality Shift as well. Racing yep. taken to a new dimension from Apollo and Academy Games, a very Ameritrash game from companies usually steeped in their war game and Euro roots. I gotta say it's a nice change of pace from the company. I do dig it. Do you enjoy racing games? I know heat pedal to the metal is the hotness right now, but what's your favorite racing game? Let us know in the comments. Email me at mo at tabletopbellhop.com or start a thread over at discord.tabletopbellhop.com.